I really do love the Urban Roots story. It's such a great way to engage young people with the earth and with growing things and with such great results for both, I think. Well, right now we're going to be talking about tomatoes with Renee Studebaker, who has a blog on statesman.com, and that is Renee's Roots. And uh, uh, Renee confesses to being a tomato overachiever. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to be talking about everybody's favorite garden plant, which is the tomato. And why is that so, Renee? Well, I think it's because that once you've tasted a homegrown tomato, there's, there's really no going back. <laughs> and, uh, and then once you start growing them and you discover that there's so many different varieties, mm -hmm. uh, heirlooms as well as hybrids, mm -hmm. and, and different little tricks that you can try to mm -hmm. get along to extend your season or mm -hmm. get a bigger tomato or even a sweeter mm -hmm. tomato, um, it's, it's just, it, it's really addictive. Mm -hmm. And it's fun to be able to, to have that success and then to be able to hold up one of those big tomatoes and say, look, I did this. Right. Now to, let's eat it. <laughs> <laughs> and to share it. Mm -hmm. and, and anybody who grows tomatoes successfully usually has bags to share. To share, yes, Right, which yes. is a great thing to do. I bring some into the office okay. from time to time. Yeah. So uh, you're all about the tricks. You were talking about extending the growing season, uh, trying all these different things to get the perfect tomato. So uh, this time of year, we're, we're looking at late January, mm -hmm. still kind of cold here mm -hmm. in uh, central Texas. Mm -hmm. What are you up to in your garden with the tomatoes? Well, one of the uh, things that I'm, gonna, that I'm trying is I'm going to start my tomatoes a little bit earlier than is generally recommended because I've got this new little thing here that I'm going to try. It's called a water wall. Okay. And you fill it up with water uh, and wrap your tomato plants. Okay. You put a cage on them first and then wrap the cage. Okay. And it collects heat mm -hmm. during the day from the sun and then the warmth of the soil also helps it to stay warm and so your tomato plants stay warmer at night, which is the main reason mm -hmm. you don't want to plant them too early. It's like hot water bottles for your for your tomatoes right, basically. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, and the main and the reason that that, that it's good in our cl climate mm. to uh, try to plant a little bit early if you mm. can keep them healthy and, and keep them growing is that the summer here is so hard on tomatoes. Mm -hmm. a hot, hot summer um, is... They shut down. Is, is not a good tomato growing time. Yeah, so they really do shut down and uh, so the earlier you can get to it the better. And you get your big production mm -hmm. and you pick your tomatoes and then you then you move on. But if you do start early, you just need to be a little more vigilant, I guess. Right, yeah, just to take care to make sure that you're protecting them. Yeah. Uh, on cold nights. Right, right. Now, um, you have, uh, you often collect seeds mm -hmm. from the tomatoes that you favor, mm -hmm. and, and sometimes these heirlooms are kind of hard to find. You may find them one year, not the next. Mm -hmm. So you have a, a, sleet, a seed uh, kind of gathering and harvesting uh, technique that I think a lot of people would be interested in. Yes, I have, um, what I do is, um, from the biggest, uh, sweetest tomatoes that I grow, uh -huh. I pick one and I collect the seeds. Mm -hmm. I put them in a small bowl with a little bit of water and just let them sit at room temperature for a few days until they start to ferment mm -hmm. and get a little bit stinky. Okay. And then you run that through a strainer with through, run some water through a strainer okay. to clean them. Mm. Maybe rub it a little bit against the, the metal yeah, strainer. Yeah, gotcha, right. And then you uh, let them dry mm -hmm. in the strainer in a, you know, in a nice dry place. Mm -hmm. And then you're ready to plant. Um, it's very easy. Mm -hmm. And what's the purpose of letting them sit for the few days? Uh, to dry, just to dry them out so that they don't uh, get moldy okay. or uh, uh, bacteria okay, growth gotcha. if you want them to dry. I got you. Okay. And also the rubbing them against the metal gets rid of uh, a coat. coating mm -hmm. so it makes them germinate easier. It also helps to, uh, okay. to ward off bacteria. Well, I think that's a really handy t uh, trick because and I know that was the case in, in the last garden that I grew tomatoes in. We had one particular variety that was absolutely our favorites. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was a rare heirloom that we, we just got lucky to find one year. Next year we couldn't find it at all. Well, that's my heirloom that I tried this year, earlier this year, that I really liked, mm -hmm. is uh, German Pink. Mm -hmm. And I did buy the seeds uh, uh, for it, mm -hmm. and it, I'd never tried it before. Mm -hmm. This happens to be a green mm -hmm. tomato 
uh, one of the last green tomatoes of the fall season. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think it's going to turn, so I'm going to go ahead and just eat it as a green tomato, either right. fry it or right. put it in a curry or something. Right. But anyway, these pink Germans, I saved some of the seeds because they were so good. They're very mm -hmm. prolific. Uh, they didn't uh, shut down in the heat as soon as some of my other heirlooms. And they have a good old-fashioned kind of tomato taste. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I'm always looking for is that sharp, old-fashioned tomato you know, taste. And I when you find it, you, you want to save the seed from it. Right. And I also like the form of that one, too. Mm -hmm. you know, I like the heirloom forms. They're mm -hmm. funky. They're not like projectiles like the modern tomatoes. Right. right. They get they're sometimes kind of lumpy and <laughs> wrinkled and... And kind of uh, squinched up in the face. Yeah, right. <laughs> and you have the little cherry tomatoes there too. And there was an important point: is that it's nice to have, make sure that you get these little salad-like tomatoes mm -hmm. in because there's, they produce a tremendous amount, right. and they also uh, often will produce at different times. Right. You can. Uh, uh, stagger your planting even mm -hmm. with salad tomatoes and extend your season a little bit into the summer mm -hmm. because they uh, resist the heat a little bit better mm -hmm. and will keep on producing. Okay, well, we, we talked about being vigilant to protect the plants. What do you do on a cold a night? If, you've, mm -hmm. if you, know, you get your plants out early, mm -hmm. what's one of the things that you typically will do? Um, if I usually grow my tomatoes in cages, mm -hmm. and so that makes it easy for me to uh, right. drape, mm -hmm. uh, row cover over them, wrap them in row cover, mm -hmm. or even just throw a blanket over them. Okay. If it's a really, really icy night, I might put um, a little uh, light bulb mm -hmm. at the bottom of the cage and kind of tuck it under mm -hmm. the row cover and use point Christmas it. lights or something. And like? or Christmas lights I've used too because that'll keep that'll mm -hmm. keep heat inside that um, okay. growing area. Okay. Well, the, you know, and the floating row covers everybody's using that nowadays, mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. make a, a nice cheap way to kind of right. wrap these things up and provide that extra protection. Mm -hmm. Now. We've mentioned um, that you like the heirlooms. What are some of your favorite varieties? Well, the variety um, that I've had really good luck with, and I love the flavor of it, and I keep growing it year after year, is Purple Cherokee. Purple Cherokee, uh -huh. okay. And, uh, or Cherokee Purple. I've mm -hmm. you know, heard it referred to both ways. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very rich flavored tomato. It also can get really big. And mm. so they can be really um, impressive. Impressive if you're going for the you know the overachievement yeah. award. <laughs> right. uh, they're also um, uh, I've had really good luck with them being very productive. Mm -hmm. Sometimes heirlooms are not quite as productive as some of exactly. the hybrids. Right. But I've had good luck with. Okay, with so the purple Cherokees. Cherokee mm -hmm. is a good one. And uh, celebrity is not a heirloom, mm -hmm. but it, it is. For, for me, the most tried and true mm -hmm. hybrid tomato um, from I've my garden. I've heard that from so many people. That it has a good flavor. Mm -hmm. For it being a hybrid, it still has a great flavor. Mm -hmm. It's resistant to all the main tomato diseases, mm -hmm. and it's just very reliable. Uh -huh. Do you have any favorites in, this, in the little cherry tomato? Yes, I like uh, Juliet's because they're so prolific, and mm -hmm. um, and they, they will just keep on growing through the heat. Mm -hmm. and so you'll always have a little bit of a tomato, I mean a little tomato in your <laughs> in your garden if you grow them. Right. I like the sun golds because they're, I like the kind of tart, sweet I, I like flavor. The, I like the tart, sweet tomatoes uh -huh. best, I think, mm -hmm. yeah. And I, um, and also if you're, if you're making uh, a tomato salad, it's great to have different colors and different shades. Oh, sure. And so that, that's fun, too, to yeah, have and, those and that's goals. And when you cook with uh, the, the little cherry tomatoes and you get all those different colors in there, mm -hmm. it just makes for beautiful dishes oh, on the plate. Really, you know, yeah. Right? yeah. You can make a beautiful salad just with sliced tomatoes and oh, yeah. drizzled olive oil and a little bit of basil from the garden. Okay, you're making me hungry. You're <laughs> making me very hungry. Now, um, real, very briefly, uh, for insect prevention uh, early on in the year, what's the most important thing for people to know? To watch your plants. Mm -hmm. uh, just go take a morning walk and, and look at your plants and, and mm -hmm. look for little, um, uh, for baby leaf-footed bugs. Mm -hmm. Or, uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> which I have a problem with them. And, and the how do you deal bugs. with them? I've tried all sorts of things, uh, hand vacuum, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, which is fun but strange, and sometimes it, suck, it sometimes it damages the yeah. plant a little bit. I think I like best knocking them off the okay. plant into a bowl of soapy water. Okay, all right. Well, uh, 
a nice soft landing mm -hmm, for the mm -hmm. leaf-footed bugs. Although I'm Maybe not... They don't deserve the soft landing, but no. there you go. <laughs> Sometimes you can just squish them, too. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, Renee, people can find you uh, at, uh, the, the, on the Statesman uh, uh, blog it's site. Statesman.com slash go slash okay. Renee's Roots will okay. take you right there. Okay. Thank you so much for being on, on Central Texas Gardener. Coming up next, it's our friend Daphne.